What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video in today's video. We are back with another Lions video and today we are here once again to take a look at this Lions Giants game man and doing a rewatch on this game today I wanted to focus on some of the front seven players for the Lions as well as some of these offensive linemen and I went through I took some clips that stood out to me from rewatching this game and I just want to talk about things that stood out from the rewatch now not every clip is on here that I probably would like to share because I'm trying not to make the video too long because there's already a lot on here for example Ross Pierce Baker or Brad Cecil both of the backup centers like what they he did there were some clips i definitely could have put on here ross pierce baker was also released on an injury settlement so he'll become a free agent so that's also the reason i did not put clips of him in this video and from even guys that we're going to talk about on this video i left clips off of as well as the Connor galvins who played a little bit of left tackle for us in this game like there's definitely players that i could have put more clips on for this but i didn't want to make the video extremely long so i try my best to limit it it's always something that we can revisit but it's definitely a positional group that through training camp was seemingly very difficult to get a sense on what it was really looking like and now that we have our first preseason game it was really cool to get a sense of like man these guys are performing well and we're getting really good movement here or on the defensive side of the ball look at what the front is doing look at what Levi's doing I mean I couldn't pick out Levi in training camp all of a sudden you see him you're like dang Levi's playing he looks good so I wanted to point out things like that that stood out to me some good some bad here and just go through some of my notes that I had and I'm going to try my best to kind of fly through this I'm not really sure what I'm going to title this video because we're taking a look at both offensive line defensive line and even some linebacker clips not necessarily the secondary or really the you know running backs receivers quarterbacks anything like that more so just the trenches so with that Let's just dive right into it. Now, of course, a lot of my focus for the offensive line was on Kobe Sorso, the rookie, and also Jermaine Effetti. Now, I definitely felt like there was plays that I could have put in there that maybe something for even those two guys, but also other players that I could put in there as well. I definitely got some notes on, I think, each of the guys and some of the thoughts that I had from this first preseason game. Now, one thing that I thought showed up, and it was kind of an issue, I thought, for the entire offensive line, you know, we had like four or five plays in there where we had a free rusher. Now, I think sometimes the defense just did well. Other times, they just outnumbered how many blockers we had, so that makes sense but just too many free rushers that maybe could have been prevented just a little bit better in terms of maybe who we picked up first and not to say that this is necessarily an example of that this is a screen but I thought a couple of things here first off one thing that I liked about Colby Sorso coming out of college playing the tackle position I thought his ability to jump set get inside hands control block early would be very beneficial from the guard position I thought we saw a really good amount of reps like that in this game where he was able to do that not all of them but a lot of good ones and then also as a polar it didn't look as smooth I thought there was some also you know some weird issues with that even back in college but that didn't always look as clean from a lot of our offensive linemen and then one thing with Jermaine Effetti was the athleticism and you saw that coming out of the draft but I thought athleticism tied with control pass protection the guy really wasn't on the ground the way that he was able to control himself with a lot of that really good athleticism I thought it was a pretty well-rounded game for Jermaine Effetti at the tackle position and we'll start off here with the screenplay the big thing I'm pointing out and now there were some weird snap issues we'll take a look at that things like that but this was one where I felt like you know Colby Sorstel was watching the end kind of loop inside on this play yet his feet weren't really moving and maybe with some of this kind of late recognition here between 24 the big thing here is that his feet aren't moving and you can see he kind of gives up the inside on this play that was the screen so it wasn't really an issue I also noticed Jermaine Effetti the quickness that he showcased off the line of scrimmage again with control cutting off defenders I thought that was just a big part of his day this is Darren Paolo kind of getting beat a little bit on the second effort thought an issue here he kind of just overset on this one it kind of threw off his anchor you can see his feet he tried to hop himself back and then that second effort just kind of lost on that play we had a few of those you know you're gonna have things like that especially you know your first preseason game Benito Jones we're gonna drop move back and forth here I thought Benito Jones played a pretty well rounded game now he didn't have as many flash plays really outside of the sack but I thought there was actually a lot of like little things that look good the big thing for me I know there's juice in his game I know he's a big guy he didn't look maybe as maybe as big as he did last season but I thought really he looked pretty nimble you know the ability to stay on his feet maybe a little bit more in control is the right word for that here he is kind of at this three tech here I thought some of the recognition now we played I thought a lot of different techniques in terms of what we would ask of our defensive linemen but here you can see as the mesh point happens and occurs you see him kind of launch himself forward some nimbleness to kind of slither through the gap on this play I love that and of course I had to finish this because it was that man Brian Branch and this was just an awesome play we saw a lot of this in college you can see him, him fly, uh, following kind of the slot alignment here I love what Kaminsky does how he kind of takes that away rolls with the quarterback that was just an excellent play across the board bought some time for Brian Branch and then Branch did exactly what he did 
kid back at Alabama. So, I mean, you know, I guess really no surprise there from what we saw. This was an example where Sorcerer had a blown block, but as I touched on, we had a few of these where it was just like weird timing with the snap. Like Ross Pierce Baker here is at center on this play. And like, it seemed like no one had idea the snap was even coming. Maybe not even Nate Sudfeld. Uh, and you can see it almost looks like he's surprised, but no one moves at the snap. I mean, even you'll notice that the running back moves a little late. The receivers move a little late. We just throw it away. And I thought it threw off maybe a little bit here for Colby Sorcerer. The biggest reason I say that, you could see where his, you know, feet are at, tied with his hands, unable to really get inside hands on this. And it kind of led to a little bit of that kind of collapsing back. Um, but that was just kind of a thrown off play from, from the start. Now, this one, I thought there was definitely some good here. And, you know, Matt Nelson, I thought there was a couple examples, maybe a little bit of a soft edge. Maybe it was a five-step drop. We'll take a look at an example like that. Although, this was pretty good. Uh, first off, Colby Sorcerer, I'll focus on him. I liked his angles. You really liked back in college that he wasn't on the ground a lot. I know that sounds weird because I just showcased him on the ground, but he wasn't a lot, especially working to the second level, the control, the way that he would pace himself, the way that he would find targets, angles of entry. I love that here. And he almost, he really did stumble over this defensive tackle. Notice he'll stumble over the defensive tackle on his way to the second level here, yet he still maintains control, takes good angles, gets an inside hand on his punch. His left hand gets inside here, and he's able to really sit down, control this block the way that he wants to and ride with it. I thought that was cool, and it showcased some of the good that you saw back in college there. Now, um, on the flip side, you also take a look at Jermaine Fetty, some of the quickness in his stance on the backside here to kind of sit down. Also, Matt Nelson. Uh, now, there was like a split zone where maybe he didn't get the movement that he would have liked to, but here you see him fight to reset his hands. I thought he had a really nice day. You know, he had a guy on his knees at first, but had a really nice day, I thought, you know, blocking. Now, there's some pass pro issues, but I thought he had a really solid day pass blocking or run blocking. See him reset his hands there. You got the receivers in there blocking. One thing there was a lot of, there was a lot of really good movement in the run game. A lot of good movement, specifically with the first second lineup, with, with the second unit, you know, obviously the first unit in this game. It's a lot of good movement in the run game. And I think sometimes that can kind of all go together and you're like, oh, it's the running back. And it's, you know, yes, it is. But it was also the offensive line did a nice job of getting pretty consistent push. And I think that was something that I definitely wanted to, you know, kind of make an example of here, consistent push. Here you get some of those jump set looks. Uh, I think we'll get a lot of this this season. It's because of the play action. You'll get the five-step jump set. Like, let's get the ball of his hand, some three-step. We even had some one-step drops from a shotgun alignment. Balls out quickly. Here you see Sorstel jumping number 72 on this play getting in his chest also Jermaine Effetti you know you get a lot of those things Gibbs obviously does his job this is Matt Nelson giving up the sack here you can see him at, at the left tackle position here kind of a soft edge they go to this five-step drop and again now the flip side is what I liked here from Jermaine Effetti is he moves really well a lot of quickness and twitch in his game um, and you can see him at right tackle here but he did it with control and that was the big thing for me right getting in front of the defenders here it wasn't obviously clearly the most elite uh, pass rusher this wasn't like even going against James Houston so you'll see more low like that but you did see with tight ends on both sides so that kind of throws it off a little bit too in terms of timing a little bit of like a hesitation and then he takes off you can see trying to get the edge i thought for a fetty they're getting on top of it playing with control keeping a wide base good timing on this punch to kind of hold that down now here on the flip side with matt nelson i thought the big thing here you know playing a little tight in that kind of five step drop the edge gets a little bit soft here and he's able to work around it get a hit on the quarterback this was a little bit again of that jump set look again from colby source so the clip's kind of short on this play you see my right guard jump setting again the defensive tackle here boom getting in his chest flip back to the defensive side of the ball I said there wasn't a ton of flash plays I thought from Benito but he looked solid well this was the one flash play that he had and here he was at three tech that second effort win I thought we had a lot of different you know sometimes they played the gap and a half other times they were just shooting gaps upfield with Levi I thought there was a lot of that which is not a bad thing I think that's kind of playing to his strength a little bit but y'all saw a little bit of both but here like we saw that kind of attacking into your block reacting off of that and in this case to be able to have that second effort win here from Benito Jones was really nice to see. You can see you've got a rip underneath and uh, bring the quarterback down, finish the play. That was awesome. As an example, we'll start to kind of take a look at that linebacker position a little bit, mix in some clips from that as well. Big thing for me, overarching, was as blitzing linebackers, a lot of success. I, I never felt like Alex Anzalone was the best blitzing linebacker. I thought Campbell would bring us good upside here because he could close. But Malcolm Rodriguez, very good blitzing. Jalen Reese Maven was very good. Derek Barnes, like, we had a lot of success blitzing our linebackers, specifically when they were, you know, stepping up with a running back one-on-one -on -one and just winning that battle pretty much immediately. Now, here you see Jack Campbell, and it was very hard to get a sense on coverage depth and things like that. But this is one of the ways that I loved uh, when he was utilized back in uh, Iowa. Now, here I almost feel like as a slot corner, you're looking at Brian Branch. It's like, hey, man, kind of lean a little bit to this outside leverage. Like, really don't give up that leverage. He does a little bit here to Beasley on this play. Uh, you kind of see he gets stepped up on a little bit 
bit right there. But the big thing is, uh, this is where I love when they use Jack Campbell in college, right? Like, especially, you know, kind of in these zone looks where you could kind of play this inside leverage and then dive underneath, kind of read the quarterback at the break point, dive underneath, shoot those out, uh, out routes, things like that, even when he was working into the slot. But also notice Malcolm Rodriguez here lining up against this running back, just running through him. We had a lot of that. They were they were struggling. We didn't get a sack on any of those plays. We just saw a lot of success playing through those guys. Speaking of Melk Rodriguez, uh, he showed some things even from last year, like this, you know, running through an offensive lineman here, just basically shooting up on the center, I believe, on this play, and he kind of just, like, tosses him over. I loved Jack Campbell on this one, how he fought his way back. You see him kind of pursuing at the top here. Also notice Starling Thomas. Starling Thomas at the bottom of your screen at cornerback. Notice how Starling Thomas is... Uh, reading this run now there's only one safety deep on this play i don't know where he's aligned at probably middle field so i'm not thinking that he's going to have direct help i mean we gave some different looks in terms of like there was an example where a cornerback blitz down we may have to play lucas blitz linebacker drops but like this is an example where unless the safety is rolling over to play coverage here it could be difficult to get super aggressive stalling thomas seemingly quick recognition of kind of the zone run that was coming on this play and uh you know usually the ball's not gonna be thrown there if anything it's gonna be a boot the other way and he dives down now pascal does his job getting on the edge here but recognition example seemingly you see Malcolm Rodriguez again shoot up here on the offensive lineman Campbell is kind of pursuing behind it cuts back where you see you know Romeo Okor getting in there I love though the big thing for me here was just Jack Campbell working back into the play feisty like he was getting back in there and you're gonna see he's the guy that ends up on top of the ball carrier to end that play I love that from Jack Campbell the way that he just fought back into that one was really cool again Malcolm Rodriguez taking on a pulling offensive lineman tons of success doing this probably saw like three of those looks uh here's an example of it right there boom takes on the pulling offensive lineman uh stack shed for a little guy like i, I don't want to say a little guy but we even saw this at uh at um oklahoma state his ability to do this and it was because leverage strength obviously has a the wrestling background but just that ability to stack and shed without necessarily the length now saying that jack campbell doesn't have excellent length either for a guy at his height but here he is working on i think the center here getting off his block you're gonna see because he's gonna be the guy that closes this off you just gotta love the effort obviously the fluidity which the way that he was moving and closing and running and just some of the movement that you saw was just like man that looks good um just looks really athletic but here for mel rodriguez to take on the lead blocker shed the block get to the outside now he was unable to come with this tackle. That's difficult. That's where you see some of the length. We've seen this in the past where just length issues would come into finishing off the play. Here the running back puts a little stiff arm on him. But, again, you're going to see he's trying to get off the block and then make the tackle. That's going to be a tough wrap-up. But shout out to Campbell for the pursuit. Bring that down short gain on that play. And speaking of linebacker, how about Jack Campbell? So this was the play. Now, it's not the best angle, but he's running into the flat, taking away the running back. We saw a lot of, I guess, vanilla looks in that sense. You know, linebackers would take the running back. If they didn't come out, maybe they just blitz. You know, we saw a lot of vanilla in that sense. Um, so we got a lot of looks there, and they'll probably be more expanded as we get into the season, I would expect. But even on a vanilla look like this, uh, we saw the replay of it, right? Here he is on the running back, and obviously he's getting chased down. Christian Covington with a second effort win. I, I, I didn't notice a lot of, like, immediate wins, but, you know, here he is battling, getting back into it, Romeo chasing him down. And then just stay in coverage, not get grabby pass breakup you would give him on that play it hit him on the play so you know that was nice kind of face guarded the defender there this one there's a couple things i wanted to point out first saw broderick martin who had an up and down day i thought for the most part some things i thought you saw in college you know in terms of consistency which is going to have to you know obviously find more consistency and it felt like this for example here he is working on in a one technique to the left shoulder uh of this offensive of the, of the center on this play and you can see he kind of misplaces his hands initially you can see he gets up on the shoulders and he's kind of forced to replace i thought that led to an issue here of him being able to really hold his ground um, I like the the minimal you know usage to get off the line and some of the quickness there able to kind of stay down you saw that back at uh you saw that back in college as well Western Kentucky his ability to do that I still have to talk about this year's sponsor for the football season I'm very excited about this and I really appreciate this opportunity we have partnered with bet us man and bet us is a leading online betting platform that offers a wide range of sports betting and casino games now bet us has a reputation for the reliability liability their security and their excellent customer service and there's a lot of ways to get in touch with them and it's very easy to sign up so all you have to do is click the top link in the description they're hooking you up with some nice bonuses so if you click that link top of the description you can claim some nice bonuses all you have to do is sign up it's like two pages very easy to sign up then you can claim your bonus you see there's multiple different bonus options you make your deposit and if you make a minimum $100 deposit you can get a 125% match on that deposit so they're hooking you up at us has a lot of different ways to bet so it's not just football i mean they hit on all the major sports football 
basketball, baseball, soccer. I mean, hey, if you're into soccer, there you go. Heck, they got esports on here, man. There's tons of different ways to do it, whether that's, you know, game props, pregame betting, whether that's over-unders, whether that's future bets, live betting as well, including parlays, so you can build out your ticket and do things that way. If you're a returning member, there are five currently re-up promotions. There are six listed currently sign-up promotions. Through BetUS, you become a loyal member to BetUS, and this leads to other perks, including free payouts, free monthly tournament entries, bigger bonuses. And I want to shout out to BetUS. I'll have something very creative going forward for this, but for now, shout out to BetUS. You get inconsistent plays like this. Now, you didn't get a lot of zero technique looks, but we've seen that. We've seen it in training camp. We did see a few things like that where he goes zero tech, and then you'd have you know two, three techs working one-on-one -on -one against the guard, trusting him to be able to handle both A-gaps. So you're going to get things like that, or you'll get shade looks like this. Maybe he's playing a gap and a half, that kind of thing. The big thing, though, uh, here, I thought the hands you know really didn't get on early, so it kind of brought him down to his knee here, sliding back a little bit. And then you have Christian Covington here working the B-gap on this play. Notice how he's able to get his block maintain it, kind of play through it, stack shut off it. That was clean from Christian Covington. But what that has allowed, and you saw a lot of it in this game, really cleaned up a lot of these linebackers just shooting gaps like Jalen on display, just shooting through the A gap. You know, again, you have Broderick on the opposite A gap kind of playing through it. You have Covington on the B gap kind of pushing through it, and it just freed up Jalen Rizabin to just shoot through. So he immediately shoots through. Then you have Jack Campbell kind of filling this empty gap on the on the C gap side, which is where you can see no one's really aligned here outside of Jalen Rizabin, but they kind of twist and crisscross on this one. So you can see Jack Campbell begins to fill, and then he recognizes, oh, wait, hold up, that, that might be going back inside. So he slides through, but the big thing there is that you have a clean Jalen Reeves maybe just shooting downhill because of what your defensive linemen are capable of. And there you get a huge tackle for loss. And then this next play may, may be even more impressive, finds a way to you know kind of finish this thing off. I like from Jack Campbell is that this is what you got excited about coming out of Iowa because there's just not a lot of players that can do this. Malcolm's kind of a rare one because of his size. He shouldn't be able to do this, you would think, stack and shed linemen. Jack Campbell has kind of more of your natural build to do that. Obviously, Derek Barnes does as well. Defense been playing linebacker. So it's been clear that the Lions have light guys that can do that. And Campbell was like, wow, there's not a lot of linebackers that are built like this, right? Derek Barnes is a DN with really long arms. And it was like, oh, he could do this. It just may take time. Now you get a guy like Jack Campbell, and it's like, well, he definitely can do this. And you saw it here working against, I believe this is the center or the guard on this play. I'm not sure. You see the stack and shed here. See how it gets in his chest, sheds off it. Now, Broderick Martin, you really did a nice job of getting in on this tackle. Uh, you can see it right here battling with the lineman and just finding a way to get him down again Jalen shooting But that was clean I thought from me from Jack Campbell to get off the block slide over and get in on that tackle Levi I saw you saw a lot of looks like this uh, there not every look But there was a lot of you know him just shooting upfield jumping gaps that wasn't all the time And sometimes I think it was situational dependent like did you have the bodies up there? Where you're just playing the run you can see they got five guys across the line of scrimmage safety sitting in the box here So, you know that he got a little bit aggressive here and he was just shooting that gap here He's shooting that B gap Levi is but the big thing for that was and obviously there's a lot of talk about that when he came out of the draft was just the explosiveness some of the get off it, it was there for Levi and you could see it here just jumping that B gap you know again forcing you could see the offensive lineman is kind of crashing down on this inside zone so he kind of takes two guys with him and then the linebacker stepping in Jalen steps in first Jack Campbell kind of follows kind of follows in second you notice on this play you got Broderick Martin now here it looks like he's a little bit more in a head up alignment with the center here so as you're going to notice you know you're going to see that uh, on the flip side you have also shooting kind of the B gap is, uh, is uh, Christian Covington. So Bradrick Martin can open up things for that. Now you got so many bodies here that it kind of just cleared up the C gap and it made it free for the linebackers, which again is the hope with, with defensive linemen, right? You're not always getting the flash play from Bradrick Martin, but if he can handle, you know, multiple gaps and not lose his ground, you're hoping that he's going to free up some space to do things like this and just play clean. And obviously the linebackers were on top of that. Jalen shoots in first, Campbell flies in second. Back to the offense line a little bit. How about Jermaine Effetti? Again, I noted this again, protecting the edge here at right tackle. That's not to say Matt Nelson didn't have his good reps, okay? I don't want to make it sound like he didn't. Like, obviously, he had a couple that he gave up here. But, you know, he had his solid reps as well. But I was really focused on Effetti coming into this game. And you can see good timing off the line of scrimmage. He had a lot of that. And then I thought just the way that he was able to maintain kind of like his inside torque and things like that into contact. But here again, he's protecting the edge on this play here for Sudfeld on uh, kind of a shorter drop. You get the uh, one, two, three step drop on this play. Welcome, Rodriguez. Let's take a little bit more of a look at these linebackers. So you have Rodriguez again here. You have the defense find the B gap the A gap is kind of cleared up here and Melk Rodriguez just shoots in there takes on the takes on the center head on like this right boom 
takes on the center, stacks it, and then somehow he sheds off this block and finishes. You shouldn't be able to do that for a guy that's like 5'11", 230, but he does it. And I thought the big thing was he looked a little bit more lean. Like, he still showed so much of that strength, but he looked lean. And this is what I was talking about, like beating the running backs. Malcolm here, he's going to blitz on this running back. You can see he's going to lines him up and then just immediate stack and shed. I mean, that is the word of the day for Malcolm Rodriguez. That's what he was doing. Also, you'll see Benito Jones. He's able to get a little bit of an edge here on, on the pressure. But then you notice from the linebacker position, you know, you have Derek Barnes. Now, this is iffy in coverage here. So, Iffy uh, has this drag route. Derek Barnes steps down and kind of takes it away. But as you're going to see, Iffy then is going to drop out. Now, Barnes also drops out. So it's not like they necessarily switched this off. They both kind of dropped out. It could have just been simply the recognition of where the pass was going. I thought this was promising for Barnes to shoot down on this drag route, notice the ball is going, and then immediately get his hands up nearly in the passing lane. But then a guy like Iffy here who's passing this off here to Barnes, you see he kind of follows through, also realizes the pass is coming. And, you know, you had two guys in the area just unable to make the play there. Do want to say this so yesterday we did our or was yesterday or two days ago we did our uh stock up stock down and one guy that i had in down was chris smith and going back and rewatching, i may have had it confused with a different number a couple of times i don't think i would have put chris smith in stock down i, I don't think that was right if anything would have been up down uh, i don't think it was like that you know Corey durden for example didn't play a ton seemingly and then at the end he had a pressure but um outside of that you could have maybe put him into that category potentially but i don't think i should have put chris smith there you know looking back on it because i was a little surprised honestly when i put him on the list i was like man i thought chris smith was doing some things and uh, I thought, honestly, in this game, that's not to say he was dominant. I wouldn't have put him in the up category, but I wouldn't have put him in down after rewatching. And I thought a lot of it was the control, kind of the understanding, some of the things that you liked here, like on this play, the way that he's able to uh, kind of control here his block and then kind of work off of that second effort, those kind of things. Now, this was that example I was talking about. So they bring Chase Lucas in the slot. They blitz him, and then Derek Barnes drops into coverage on this play. So we got to see some creative looks like that. I did like how Chase Lucas here, who was diving downfield, kind of stopped himself and then it just rushed forward kind of got into the passing lane here you can also see the rush there from Julian Okwara kind of stopped himself sat into kind of a contain role I thought that was really nice from Chase Lucas one of the more heads up plays so you're trusting obviously Derek Barnes to kind of carry this up the seam here but then Chase Lucas plays under control steps in the way shuts down any type of you know run potential for the quarterback there I thought that was a really nice under control play from Chase Lucas this one I've talked about this one already I love this one for Malcolm Rodriguez see two linebackers Barnes and Malcolm walk up to show rush here and you're going to see the confusion. The tackle sits inside. He's like, look, I got to take the closest man. Both offensive lines had issues with this, but you also have to give credit to the defense for selling it a little bit. And here the offensive tackle is like, I'm going to take the inside guy. And then as it snapped, they're like, no, we're not. Now, James Houston is one of those guys that's going to be impossible to recover against because he's so quick that uh, if you just take like, oh, the wrong step for one second like this, some guys you may be able to get a hand on him. You're not doing that with James Houston. But then for Malcolm Rodriguez to also finish off this play, show walking up, run into the flats, close, finish the tackle, clean tackle, and uh, shut that play down. An example where you had a free rusher, and I thought on this play, honestly, you maybe could have looked at the running back and said, oh, he could have picked up this blitz. It seemed to be a little bit delayed on this one, but that was an example where we just had a guy running through. How about Jermaine Effetti, man? And I wanted to showcase Effetti, right? Here he is at right tackle, kind of that, again, 45-degree pass set, and you're going to see that he's going to jump into it. Now, you're only getting a one-step drop here from uh, Nate Sudfeld. So he goes 45 degrees, and then he steps into the block, and we've seen this in the past. Uh, we actually saw this with Jermaine, Jermaine Effetti in the past, reps that look just like this with Chicago uh, where he would kind of drop it to his pass set and then as he as he kind of got in front of the uh, the edge rusher and he tried to break it back inside the way that he steps into the block kind of anchors that thing down also Matt Nelson doing a good job on the backside here you can see that him handling his block just sticking in front of it but that was a one step drop get the ball quickly and uh, the one thing that Jermaine Effetti did allow was uh, a tip pass at the line of scrimmage which I didn't love but examples like that where he steps into it for a short you know kind of one step we're going to get the ball out of our hands you like how he jumps into the uh, edge rusher there and kind of gets in the way that we are not you know kind of clogging pass lanes there was definitely some good for Matt Nelson here you're going to see him kind of shoot into the block here jump set 49 on this play boom get into the chest also you notice Brad Cecil at the center position I thought Ross Piercebaker did pretty well as well but here he is Cecil you see him get those inside hands you know right away on this play and you see it across the board this was just really good look at this pocket that lines great even James Mitchell wasn't perfect he was getting some work with Helm on this play but you know did enough and, and his pocket's really nice again all the jump setting the play action look those kind of things you love to see it because we're going to see a big part of that this year in the Lions offense. 
offense. Levi. Now, I want to showcase some Levi because Levi, man, he just, it was so promising. It was so promising. Now, Levi did get some reps, you know, towards the end of the game as well. But and that's not to say it was all perfect, like every time he was winning. But there was a lot of promising stuff there from Levi. Honestly, some of the hand usage at the pass rusher was pretty impressive because it wasn't just winning with athleticism. There was some real hand usage there. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's been hit and miss against the run and some of the power at the point of attack. I thought they leaned into when he was out there, kind of, you know, allowing him to just jump gaps, get upfield, use some of the athleticism. But he was asked to kind of hold his ground a little bit at times too. Here he is at the top of the screen here working on the left guard here. And you get that hand swipe. You see it right there. Get on the elbow. And he gets that win. That's not just him jumping off the line of scrimmage, right? Obviously, you can see, you know, the hand usage there. Boom. Gets, as the offensive lineman shoots, gets on his elbow. And then he has some of that lateral movement skill uh, to be able to get an edge, which which we talk, which we hear about a lot there. And you can see it right there. Boom. And he's able to get upfield. Here's where you saw some of that torque like you saw back in college. Not to the same extent where he's hip tossing dudes in college. But here at right guard, uh, I think you notice a little bit here for Source. So the assignment, you know, again, it kind of changes a little bit maybe on him here as the movement post snap, but it's going to be uh, the linebacker who kind of steps in here, kind of that edge rusher, and you're going to see the torque that he's able to create. So he gets that inside left hand, he kind of rolls himself over, rolls those hips, and he's able to really drive his man backwards, okay? You can see against the edge here. So again, look, boom, gets inside, rolls over, and then he's able to drive him back, and look at the space that he's creating, like getting those inside hands on contact and then being able to have some of that torque, you know, that core strength, like, man, he did a lot out of that in college it was a lot more flashy in college but that was i thought one of the best examples of that showing up at this level now here brad cecil he's got it early and then he kind of loses the block late i thought some length things there but again look where the running back's at before he's getting touched like if we're really looking at this look how far the running back is going downfield right you got matt nelson here you know the left guard gets him first paulo and then he works up to the second level and nelson picks it up look at the movement here i mean there's a lot of space there for Ozigbo to just get downhill a lot of good things like that now this is one where i thought maybe matt nelson uh would have maybe liked to get more more movement on this one here between the defensive end but this was a split zone look and even still you did get some good movement across the board able to make that cutback get up to the second level look at james mitchell who i thought had a pretty good day he was working he had some really nice blocks i wouldn't even say this was his best one but he was working and you could see again even though you know matt nelson maybe push back a little further than he would like to on a split zone look to still have everybody blocked off and be able to create those run lanes for a zone rushing and the Lions did a lot of the you know the power running last year a lot of the pulling linemen but for some of the zone rushing looks like this you know I thought this was much more inconsistent source still had a couple of these whether that was angles in the entry this one you could see like it's almost like he gets way too far beyond the block and he just slides off it we had things like that it was much seemingly less consistent or you know the, the issue is is that there is a uh, legitimate possibility for big negatives to happen if this block is missed if that first pulling offense lineman misses on a counter play which the lions loved to do last season you're gonna have some issues so you really want to be able to cut that block off I thought Source would be a good fit for a lot of the power run schemes because of his ability to down block and seal off or pull as well. Now, some of the lateral movement I thought in college sometimes looked a little janky, but some of the ability to seal. Now, on this play, you can see he blows this block and there's kind of two missed block on this play. One thing I will say is that throughout training camp, we've seen a lot of zone rushing and then just randomly we've seen some, you know, power rushing scheme most recently when we've got the joint practices. So that definitely could be an area that's a little bit more a work in progress at this point. And I think truly one of the main things there is one timing, but then also some of the angles of entry. And I think that's something that probably does need reps, especially with the counters that has kind of these drawn out plays. The timing of when you're hitting blocks with the tight end, as well as the angles of entry as a blocker that's sealing or leading the way. You have a lot of negatives on these. You could say the same thing about it, like a, a stretch zone or something as well. But I thought there was much less consistency there. Uh, there were some really good zone reps, though, from the Lions offensive line. Talk about Levi though a little bit more. Uh, here he is at the top of the screen working on the guard here. And again, there's some of the explosiveness in the contact, those kind of things. You're gonna see some of the good get off as well. Reps of that where he's kind of off the line just quicker than everybody else. Here he gets on the guard very quickly, kind of uses that long arm to extend that inside arm. And then he goes right over top with that uh, swim move, boom, he's back into the backfield. Notice Broderick Martin, again, zero technique, working head up with the center here. And then again, Levi Onzerike working on the guard at the three technique. And uh, you're gonna see him just get into contact there with some quickness. You know, the guard tries to get in front of it, but now he's off balance and he's able to just extend. And then uh, as he sees the running back does not have the ball, now he goes on to that second effort pass rush win. And that's all start off by the very beginning of the rep. It's all set up by what he was able to do at the, at the start of it. Here he is on the backside of a run. Again, look how many bodies I have. So they're allowing him to just shoot up field between the gaps here. He's going to shoot that B gap here on the three technique. You know, the tackle is going to try to backside cut that off. He beats him to a spot. You see some kind of that flexibility, you know, the way that he kind of slithers through the offensive line here, 
boom right there gets a good step and he's able to just drive through and finish off the backside that was awesome it's just good to see levi look healthy in that sense bobby hart i thought one thing that showed up was that he looked a little bit pretty really fluid in terms of second level even some of the pull blocks that he was asked to to, to do is when he was asked to pull and work around laterally bobby hart looked pretty fluid now we know that this is a guy that's uh played the tackle position and uh specifically most recently with the buffalo bills but he was a guard back college he's a big guy here he is number 51 at right guard and i thought you saw some of the fluidity he's been used as a sixth offensive lineman just some fluidity pulling as a lineman getting up to the second lineman under line under control uh that kind of thing you just saw a lot of that fluidity now here ko is going to lose the block a little bit as nelson tries to pass it off to him but again watch bobby hart here on the bottom of the screen get up to the second level pick up his block good angle real flash of that from bobby hart this shows that athleticism that i was talking about jermaine effetti couple things here you're going to notice cecil First one to point him out. Watch him get inside hands off the snap. Right here he is, inside hands on the nose. And then watch him bounce off of this when it's passed off to Bobby Hart. Love that. Cecil then recognizes, I'm going to go help KO on this play. Boom, drops his man. Now notice Jermaine Effetti. Here he is at right tackle. Okay, on the backside of this play fake, working against what looks like a three technique, maybe a little bit more of a four eye. And he's able to step in front of it. And uh, you can see the athleticism there, controlled this block early. You have the tight ends working a little bit. That he was, you know, the tight end's helm kind of lost his block a little bit late here. But that was nice to see. You can see James Mitchell was going to help him out. Felt he had it, so he dropped out. But, you know, that was nice. Now, this one, KO lost his block a little bit too as well. I thought Pierce Baker showed some really solidness as well. KO'd, I had him as one of my downs. And some of it was just kind of losing the block, which was unfortunate. I look forward to seeing him bounce back. I think he showed real ability to pull as an offensive lineman. Clearly, maybe had some struggles in some of this zone work, uh, being able to maintain a little bit through contact so i'm looking forward to him you know showcasing and trying to bounce back a little bit top of the screen working against the guard boom look at the get off look where he is versus everybody else so he's already flying upfield watch the guard you see how he opens himself up he gets the guard to open up then gets his hands in the contact right there utilizes that shoulder so he gets on his shoulder we saw a lot of this from a guy like jalen carter super explosive so he would get on him quick force the guard to open up now they're not balanced gets on that shoulder while he's still working directly upfield and then he's able to work off of that with that swim move over top and he's able to get through, get an edge, and get some pressure. Not the finish there, but he got some pressure. And that's the thing. You just want a guy like that to just, you know, cause havoc. I'll throw this play in there because I thought it was an example of Levi doing more than just shooting upfield. Here he is again working on the right guard. And you'll see him kind of play in and through his block, kind of sit himself down. Now, it didn't go over there, but you could see that he had an example of it. I thought it was much less because, again, I thought when he was out there, they were trying to get him upfield. But you see what they're doing across the board, attacking into their gap, maybe playing a little bit of that gap and a half kind of look defensively to open some things up but I thought there was an example of Levi doing a little bit of that Roderick Martin and maybe just a little bit late on this play you know you talk about kind of getting into your block controlling it early you know if you're not just shooting up field you can see here's that zone look he's at the three tech so he's already on the outside shoulder but he doesn't get in front of it so he kind of loses his gap and you can see Trevor's going to shoot up field into the a gap here you can see Trevor back off with a split zone look but Broderick kind of loses some of that outside leverage you see him trying to fight back and get it back that was the one big run but that's like an example of like hey man those little things can allow something like that now this was a run stop from trevor again you see the upfield explosiveness or just ask him to get upfield so the the giants do a good idea and they run a draw on the play that was smart now you're going to see trevor i love the recognition here he shoots upfield gets up on this center three snap right he has this b gap so the fact that he's able to jump upfield slide over notice the run recognition slide into help there to try to make this tackle now anthony Pittman gets kind of like cut off blocked here by the tight end you can see he gets the side of him and i think it kind of pushes into trevor but i liked how he fight fought back into this got in on this play still limited it to a pretty short gain that was a good example from from him uh at that linebacker position and again how about chris smith here so here he is working on the center and this is what i liked right now this one he knocked him on the ground uh but controlling that block getting that good recognition winning quickly right here playing with good balance one thing that i liked about chris smith and we saw this a couple times last year and I, some of it's just the preseason it's scheme it's we're not playing as much zone and sometimes you're just asking guys to get up field and maybe not contain as much but still pass rush lanes are very important and having that integrity especially as a blitzer like we can't be leaving gaping holes and uh, we saw that a lot last year we've seen that in the past that that has been an issue how about chris smith here i liked it man i thought there was good examples Examples of him showing that awareness, breaking down, not just rushing a field, and being one of the more reliable kind of players in terms of showing that discipline to have that integrity kind of turn into kind of that spy role and just hold their ground and match the quarterback. Here they throw this screen, and you see Pittman had it early. Right, he shoots up field here in the B gap and he has it early, but he starts to kind of lose the outside. Good job by the blocker on this play, kind of springboards a big run. 
Again, here he is, Chris Smith. Watch him control this B-gap. Boom, here on the front side. He controls it, walls off, get his arm inside. He's able to control that block. Now, I cut this one off. This may have one been the one where Julian had it right there, and he peeked inside, and then he got around the edge. But you can see Chris Smith maintaining his gap. Um, here he is. Now, this is Shrepper on this play. This is where they throw that little hitch route, little quick curl underneath. And uh, he kind of just misplays this one, kind of just over jumps it a little bit, oversets on this tackle attempt. And then back on the offensive side of the ball. Now, Obina Eze, I don't think, had the best day. I think the big thing that came up with him is, again, got a little bit soft in terms of he would open himself up, get tall, get a little bit skinny on contact. You can see there's not much of a wide base created here. He's such a good athlete. You know, keeping him down, things like that, like Lenefetti, could hopefully help him out. Here it just looks like he got way too tall, a little bit too lateral, just kind of straight up a little bit on this one. You get kind of that soft inside edge, loses it on a second effort on this play. But on the flip side, you see Connor Galvin. Here he's got a jump set number uh, 94 on this one. He gets in his chest. You can see that. Now he's able to maintain. You see a wide base. He's kind of gets thrown off a little bit right here. You can see the pass rush move attempt, but he's still sitting down, sitting right in front of him. You got some good there from Connor Galvin in this game, being able to do things like that. I want to showcase that one right here. Here he is working on the guard. You can see the center slides off to take him, and instead of still working upfield and like getting in a position where, okay, man, I'm just taking out the play, and now there's a pass rush lane, right? You kind of get in a spot where you have that two-on-one, -on -one, he drops out, kind of gets in a position where he's playing, playing that spy role. Here's the one-on-one. -on -one. You want to see Durden try to win that, uh, of course, but he's able to sit over top and not allow the quarterback to take off, which is good. You know, you like to see that. Now, Corey Durden did bounce back on the final play of the game. Here he is working on the guard, and here he did win. Drives down, gets a little bit of a bull rush, pushes the guard back into the pocket, forces the ball to be thrown up. So it was a good finish for him, but the big thing here for me is Chris Smith showed some of that discipline, that integrity as a pass rusher. So I just want to showcase a couple players that stood out, guys that I was looking for, Colby Soros, still Jermaine Fetty, Levi. Uh, obviously, I didn't show everything here. You know, some of the linebacker play, I want to showcase some of that. I thought Jalen played well. I thought they all really played well. They all had a lot of good in there. You know, now there was some, I thought there was a couple like miscommunications made with Anthony Pittman on one like passing play, for example. Um, but outside of that, I thought that group really played pretty well. And on the defensive line, there was a lot of good to take from it. Some bad as well. And then on the offensive line, you have to give credit to the amount of push they were able to get consistently. Like, there was something to that. And they did pretty well. Both units, Pierce Baker, Cecil held it down. Every they have a little bit of a lack of length inside there but uh, doing their job pretty well and then uh, outside of that some of the zone running had some success a little bit less on some of the power run plays I think they'll want to work on that counters more consistency for those pulling linemen uh, but Overall, I thought there was a lot of good to take away from the trenches, and I just wanted to showcase some of that. To more so of the guys that we don't talk about that much, okay? We know that Kaminsky balled out and some of these edge rushers, but how about the guys that we don't necessarily talk about a ton? I wanted to hop in here real quick to let you guys know that for the giveaway, I decided to change it up a little bit. So the first time that we talked about BetUS, I announced that we do a giveaway. If you screenshot it, you made at least the $100 minimum deposit, so you get the 125% match using the top link in the description for BetUS, that you'd be entered into a giveaway to earn the little mini helmet that I have for the Lions. And if you want it signed, I could sign it. I mean, I don't know if that's going to add value or not to it, but I could do it if you want to. Um, but you'd be entered into that if you sent me a screenshot that you signed up that you deposited. However, I decided to change it up a little bit. You don't have to deposit the $100 to get the 125% match. You have to do minimum 100 to get the 125% match into your account. But if you just deposit to create an account into the little bank they have there on BetUS, then you'll be entered into the giveaway. All you got to do is screenshot like, hey, I made my account. Look, here you go. This is what it looks like. Screenshot that to me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, two good places to do it. And if you do that, you'll be entered into the giveaway. And I'm going to to do the giveaway next week probably this day next week so if you guys want to get into that giveaway do it now don't waste any time click the top link in the description deposit create your account it's very simple and again i want to give a shout out to bet us uh no concerns there with reliability security they have great customer service that you can get in contact with so click that top link enter into the giveaway and uh yeah maybe you might win at home I don't know, but at very least, you got signed up with BetUS, and if you deposit a minimum $100, you get a pretty good deal. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.